I have been with Healthcare Partners for probably two years, and uh, my experience has been absolutely terrific. When I go to a specialist, my records follow me. There's no need to actually provide any additional information. They know what's happened in my primary care doctor's office. Become a healthcare partner today. Medicare open enrollment starts October 15 and ends December 7. Learn more about how you can become a healthcare partner at hcpnv.com. News 46 is brought to you by Comfort Hospice Care, where we give our patients and their loved ones peace of mind, knowing we provide the highest quality of care 24 hours a day, seven days a week. For more information, call 751-0349. News is also brought to you by the St. Therese Mission, a future venue for cultural and environmental events near Pahrump. Get involved. Visit us at stthereseemission.com or call 702-507-4172. Tonight on News 46, a family dog dies as a result of a structure fire. The Holiday Task Force holds a Thanksgiving feast. And several accidents occur over the weekend. News 46 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 46 with Rhonda Van Winkle and Jason Koblenz. Local coverage from Deanna O'Donnell. News 46. Local coverage you can count on. Good evening. It's Monday, December 2nd, 2013. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. Jason Koblenz is off tonight. And I'm Rhonda Van Winkle. Happy Cyber Monday, everyone. Hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving and Hanukkah. Today, Cyber Monday. Retailers are turning to the web to offer deals to consumers that they just can't pass up. This new tradition extends the idea of Black Friday to web shoppers. Retailers such as Amazon, Target, and Walmart are now promoting some version of Cyber Week and extending web-only deals through next weekend. The online discounts apply to all types of items, from appliances to clothes to consumer electronics. They also have added some bonuses of free shipping this week on many sites. In fact, if you're not getting free shipping on your online purchases this week, you may want to shop elsewhere. Thank you, Deanna. On Friday, the Clark County Fire Department crews responded to the Rio Hotel for multiple patients presenting flu-like symptoms, including nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. 18 patients were transported via Rio Hotel shuttles to area hospitals. This included 13 children between the ages of 7 and 9 and 5 adults. The patients were part of a group traveling with a youth football team from Santa Monica, California. Over 100 people have been reported to have the symptoms of the virus, which has been confirmed as the norovirus. The norovirus is spread by food contaminated with fecal, water from person to person, or from unsanitary services. Authorities believe that the virus was spread during the bus ride to Las Vegas. Well, the family dog died as a result of a structure fire that occurred on wood chips this weekend. Front Valley Fire and Rescue and Nye County Sheriff's deputies responded to a structure fire which occurred over the weekend on wood chips near Wilson Street. Upon arrival, crews found a well-involved manufactured dwelling with several attached buildings. The two people inside the home were able to escape the blaze. However, one dog, which appears to be a chihuahua, had smoke inhalation. Rescue crews attempted to save the small animal, giving it oxygen and also conducting CPR. However, the animal succumbed to the injuries. The home sustained substantial damage. The homeowners are being helped by family members at this time. Front Valley Farm Rescue Chief Scott Lewis says that the fire appears to be the cause of unattended cooking. This is Deanna O'Donnell for News 46. Oh, we're very sorry about that. We hate news like that. There were several accidents that occurred over the weekend, uh, this holiday weekend, including a quad accident that required Mercy Air to transport an adult to UMC trauma in Las Vegas and Prompt Valley Fire and Rescue to transport a child from the scene, which was located off Basin Avenue. And two vehicles also collided on Irene and Barney Street Friday morning. One person was transported to the hospital after sustaining injuries in that accident.
Tonight's accident report is brought to you by Stovall & Associates. Don't expect insurance companies to have your best interest in mind. Stovall & Associates cares. Let us help you if you have been involved in an accident. A two-vehicle accident occurred on Irene and Barney Street. Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue arrived on scene along with Knight County Sheriff's deputies who found both vehicles sustained moderate damage. One person was injured and transported to Desert View Hospital as a result of this accident. Knight County Sheriff's deputies are investigating the cause. This is Deanne O'Donnell for News 46. An emergency crews responded to an accident on Highway 160 in Happy Lane. According to reports, the parties involved declined to be transported by medic units. A two-vehicle accident occurred on Friday morning on Highway 160 and Happy Lane. Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue crews arrived on scene with Nye County Sheriff's deputies and Nevada Highway Patrol to find both vehicles that sustained moderate damage. However, no one was transported as a result of this accident. All declined to go to local medical facilities. Nevada Highway Patrol is conducting the investigation. This is Deanne O'Donnell for News 46. Deputies are investigating the cause of a single vehicle rollover that occurred Saturday night on Chipmunk Street. Nye County Sheriff's deputies and Pahrump Valley Farm Rescue arrived on scene to a single vehicle rollover on Chipmunk Street near Red Rock on Saturday night. Upon arrival, they found one vehicle resting on its side into a fence near a home. One person was complaining of chest pain as a result of the accident. It's unclear at this point if that person was transported via ambulance to the hospital. Nye County Sheriff's deputies conducted the investigation of the accident to determine the cause of the rollover. This is Deanna O'Donnell for News 46. And much more local news when we return from this break. Stay tuned. This portion of the news is brought to you by Albertsons. You're in for something fresh. Welcome back to News 46. A small plane crashed in, a, in an extremely remote part of Alaska on Friday, miles from the tiny village of St. Mary's. Rescuers had a hard time figuring out the location of the Cessna wreckage and its 10 passengers. One of the survivors, Melanie Coffey, called on the phone for help, but the poor weather, they said, it was so frustrating to find them. It was like a needle in a haystack to locate them. The 25-year-old Coffee made her way a half mile across a slippery sloping tundra and managed to find the town's landfill where she met the search party of 40 to 50 villagers and calmly guided them on foot back to the crash site. For four people, including her five-month-old boy, it was too late. They had died from their injuries. The others had wounds that included head injuries and multiple fractures. If it had not been for Melanie Coffey going for help, more victims might have died. And the commuter train that crashed in the Bronx on Sunday was going about 82 miles per hour as it entered a 30 mile per hour curve. All seven passenger cars jumped the tracks. Four people died and 67 were injured after the train derailed in the Bronx about 10 miles north of Manhattan's Grand Central Terminal. Investigators have recovered two event recorders to determine the cause of the accident. It's not the first time that the train has jumped the tracks on that turn. A freight train derailed in the same curve in July, damaging about 1,500 feet of track. There were about 150 people on board when the train derailed yesterday. Service was suspended on part of the Hudson Line and won't resume until the National Transportation Safety Board finishes documenting the scene and returns the track to the MTA for repairs. The Holiday Task Force held a Thanksgiving feast for the entire community at Nye Communities Coalition on Thanksgiving Day. They also delivered almost 200 meals with the help of many dedicated and caring volunteers. Well, we started yesterday. Of course, we've been gathering food and, and uh, uh, donations for about a month or so. But uh, yesterday we kicked it in gear. We were down here at six o'clock in the morning and uh, we started uh, you know, doing the prep things. And then uh, today we've been down here since six and uh, it's going beautifully right now. Well, we were expecting uh, you know, around a thousand people and we're prepared. 
Well, this is our annual uh, Thanksgiving Day dinner, one of our three holiday task force dinners. As you can see behind me, there's a lot of volunteers coming in to sign up. We started a little early this year because we had people waiting outside and the food's ready and everything else, so we're, we're just cranking already. Uh, it's you a gotta... little early, but uh, we normally start at one. But, you know, figured, hey, you know, let's get the people in, get them through, and let them get about their business. Who do you got up on stage uh, entertaining? Uh, I hear uh, some music up there. Yeah. Well, Dave Yoder's up there, and he also has a gentleman with him, a local guy here, and I can't think of his name right now, but he's really good on a saxophone. And uh, praise God that, you know, that man's even here now because he was in a hospital a while ago. It's a wonderful day here down at Nye Communities Coalition in the Man Center. Tell me what it's like preparing for this and getting it going because you seem to just be able to get volunteers to readily want to uh, come down and help out. Okay, we start about six months in advance. We have a monthly meeting and then when we get closer to the event, we'll go ahead and make it every week. And uh, we've been planning for this thing for ever since last year when we finished the uh, Easter one. And uh, we have Thanksgiving Day dinner here, we have Christmas here, we'll have Santa Claus, gifts to give out and things like that. And then uh, on Easter we have it over at Petrick Park and we have a barbecue over there instead. So uh, it's a great event. We have a lot of people coming and volunteering on a regular basis and then we got a lot of new people. So. We don't turn anybody away. Uh, we'll find something for everybody to do. And uh, and then some people can go home early and other ones want to stay late and help clean up and we'll have a good day of it. You also have meals uh, delivered to the homes too as well. Well, we had them delivered in record time this morning. We had 151 meals delivered mm -hmm. and they had it done by 10 o'clock. Wow. Wow. And that's, that's uh, I'll tell you, that's efficient. Uh, but again, uh, we expect a lot of people to come in. so. Uh, we're out there singing and dancing and having a good time. It's a lot of fun down here at uh, the Man Center. If people want to get involved in the next ones, how can they do that? Well, they can call me at 775-209-3100. Uh, and if they want to volunteer or if they want to donate, either one. And Desert View Hospital has some new services that are available at Mountain Valley Physicians Group. Megan Kowalski explains. He's actually a general surgeon. It's Dr. John B. Sorensen. So he break. is, we'll come back um, to he came to us back in and then June, July, take a I believe it was. And he's performing a number of various surgeries here at, at the hospital. Um, but our biggest so, news um, now is that he is doing these gastrointestinal procedures. So big one that a lot of people know of is colonoscopies. So usually people would have to drink that disgusting medicine and, you know, be close to a restroom and go all the way to Vegas for that sort of test. Now they can get it done right here in their backyard at the hospital. So, and he's fantastic. Everybody that has had a procedure done through Dr. Sorensen um, has nothing but good things to say about it. Upper GIs, lower GIs um, as well. A whole range of surgical procedures that he is performing here. Definitely, your best bet, you know, I don't have a, a comprehensive list and he kind of takes it as they come in, you know, he can kind of you basically what you would want to do is call his office schedule a consult and then he can discuss with you what your needs are and your health concerns and those sorts of things and go from there so that phone number is 775-751-7100 we're out in front of mountain valley physicians group what is that as related to the hospital desert view hospital so mountain valley physicians group is a clinic and it is actually the office where dr Sorensen. Um, practices, you know, where he does his consults, obviously the surgeries are in the hospital. It also is where Dr. Kelly Van Wagner, our internal medicine physician, has her office. Basically what the clinic is, is it's just a clinic that it's associated with the hospital. Um, the hospital established it um, and it's just like any other clinic here in town where you can go in, see your doctor, get your needs addressed and, you know, go from there. Dr. Sorensen is a primary care physician, like you said, or general medicine. You can pick him as your primary care physician, too, as well? Dr. Sorensen is a general surgeon. He's not primary care. Um, Dr. Van Wagner is uh, internal medicine, which is basically the same as primary care. The main difference is that it's usually ages 18 and up, so no pediatrics. And she focuses on, internal medicine focuses on adults. So there's a few things that are different medically, you know, when you get older and your body matures. So she focuses on those things. Would you need to be referred by your uh, uh, general practitioner to come to uh, 
Dr. Van Wagner or Dr. Sorensen? Nope. You know, obviously, Dr. Van Wagner is just like a normal family doctor, so you don't need a referral for that, um, no matter what your insurance is. For Dr. Sorensen, since he's a general surgeon, your best bet's always to check with your insurance provider, make sure that you won't need a referral. Some people might, some people may not. That's always dependent on their insurance, but not for Dr. Van Wagner. And the number once again. Well, could your airline tickets be on the rise? They're already expensive enough. And we will watch the tree lighting at the Prump Nugget. We will have all this when we come back. Please stay with us. So I'm 